there is a box in the corner of my sewing room. It is a box whose contents have not seen the light of day for many a month. Many crafters will be familiar with this box, in all of its forms. There's the ever-growing amorphous lump that lies underneath your desk, the monster underneath your bed, the stuff you vacuum packed in a fit of organization and stuffed into your garage in the hopes that you'd never have to deal with it again. This, my friends, is the unfinished sewing pile. The item that I pulled out of the box today, well, I actually did a bit of digging through the box first because I wanted to find a particular item that was right at the bottom, is this, a plain beige cardigan. It's not a particularly interesting or flattering item, and it's also missing a button down the bottom. But I really like the color, and I think that it could definitely be turned into something cuter. So the first thing that I wanted to do was to change the length. As you may have noticed by now, I really like crop stuff. So first, to crop the cardigan, I sliced off the bottom with my rotary cutter. Then, on this bit that I sliced off, you'll notice how the knits are a bit different. It's all ribbed along the bottom here and I want to keep that ribbing for my new cardigan. So with this sliced off bit unfolded, I cut the ribbing off. And now I'm going to touch this to the bottom of my cardigan as a quick way to deal with the raw edges. So I place the ribbing onto the cardigan, right sides together, with this original bottom of the cardigan pointing up. And then I pin it on, making sure to match up the side seams on both the pieces. And then once it's all pinned on, I sew the new bottom of the cardigan on like this. To sew the two pieces together, I'm using my overlocker, also called a serger, mainly because I'm working with the knitted fabric and I don't want the knit to unravel. Zigzag stitches on a regular machine would work okay, but it would be wise to use a very short zigzag stitch over each raw edge first to prevent any unraveling of the knitted material. Also, to finish off my serger seams, I usually just use a zigzag stitch over the ends and this stops them from unraveling. However, there are other methods to finish off serger seams, and I want to know, what methods do you guys use when overlocking? Anyway, now cropped, the cardigan looks like this, which is much more to my style. Now it's time for some granny chic embroidery. I recently learned a really quick and easy way to embroider roses thanks to this blog, KMAC DIY, an embroidery goddess whose technique I am reproducing here with her permission. And just by the way, her blog is also full of other really cool embroidery techniques and DIYs for beginners, and I highly recommend checking it out. So to embroider these roses, the first thing that I did was to pick out my colors, three reds and a green for leaves. Then, using this washable fabric marker, I drew three small circles on each side arranged around the neckline. It's hard to see the lines with the camera, but they're there! The three circles that I drew onto the cardigan look like this. Then, I put my embroidery hoop onto one side of the cardigan, with the three circles in the middle of the hoop, or about as close to the middle as I could get them. Now, I'm going to draw five lines radiating out from the middle of the circle like this. Next, with my embroidery thread and needle, I brought it up through the back like this. And back down through the center of the circle, creating a straight line. And then I repeated this for the other four lines. Next, I brought my needle up here, in between two of these radiating lines. The next step is really easy. I'm simply going to bring my needle over the top of the adjacent stitch and then under the next stitch in an anti-clockwise way. Then I'm going to repeat this. I'm going to go over this stitch, then under this stitch. then over this stitch, under this stitch, basically I'm going to keep repeating this in an anti-clockwise manner with the threads moving outwards from the center until I've gone around enough times to create a rose. To finish it off, I simply brought the thread to the back again and then tied a knot, or a couple of knots because this knitted material is quite gapy and I don't want the knot to go back through to the front. 
and then I cut off the excess thread. Then I repeated this for the other two circles I drew onto the cardigan in my two different colours. Next, to embroider the leaves I drew on a leaf shape with my fabric marker and then I used a satin stitch to fill the shapes in, from the edge to the halfway mark. Now I explained how to do a satin stitch in this video here, but basically I brought my needle up at the edge of the shape, then back down at the other side. And then I brought it up again next to that straight line stitch that I just made. Then I continued this up one side of the leaf and down the other until the entire leaf shape was filled in like this. Then I repeated this whole design onto the other side of the cardigan's neckline and I'm done. This cardigan has been totally transformed from a simple, unflattering beige cardigan to a cute, vintage-inspired, cropped and embroidered number. It's very, what I like to call, granny chic, a style I am very fond of, and I think that it goes really well with high-waisted skirts, shorts and dresses, buttoned up like this, or left open like this. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, that you maybe learned something, and like always, if you try out this or any of my other tutorials, then tag it with DIY Annika on Instagram so I can see your creations. And I'll see you all for my next video. Thanks for watching, bye! Thank you to all of my supporters on Patreon who helped to make this video possible. To become my Patreon supporter, go to patreon.com forward slash Annika Victoria.